Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is June 9th, 2019. This is Sunday's edition. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you ring that bell and hit that like button. And Miss Vegas, what's the watch list we're going to talk about today? Okay, well, we have quite the list because you guys know that Sundays will give you a few more just to prepare you for the week. And there's been so much bullish action in the market. I'm really happy to see this. We also heard that the tariffs for Mexico are not going to be implemented for now. So that's good. And I think it's great for the market. I think we have a bullish week ahead and so many great stocks. So we're going to talk about APPS, CFMS, SPNS, ZYXI, Workhorse, BYND, AMD, NIO, and SNAP. So let's talk about APPS. So you guys know this one here is one of my favorite ones uh, because I love this company. They keep coming up with new apps all the time. And uh, they had the nice earnings report. And uh, you know what? This keeps making higher highs and just keeps making new 52-week highs. Again, I won't be surprised to see this company, um, you know, have a, a much stronger price tag on the stock as we progress throughout the year. Um, this, to me, I like a software company. I mean, if you guys were to actually, you know, even to look at this company's chart, go way back to September, um, you'll see the stock was like under a dollar and look at the growth it's had in, you know, um, I guess you can say uh, nine months. And that is amazing, amazing growth. Um, this company is just on fire and I just love the channel. And this is what you, if you look at this chart, it's what you want to see with the company. You know, it moves up, pulls back, but every time it goes up, it just makes higher highs. And this is on a beautiful, keeps breaking its trend. And, um, you know, at one point I was waiting for it to break this $4 and boy, oh boy, it had a nice break just recently. So Jim, let's hear what's happening with APPS because this digital turbine is just on fire. Oh yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. We did have that crossover that she's talking about on the 34 and the 200 on the, on the one year chart back there in, November and December we did have the breakout and she's been on an upward climb ever since following that 34 EMA we did have a pullback to support level right here right around the 363 level last week last Monday and once it hit that pulled back about four times it created a consolidated period it went ahead and ran on up so we're going to pull up the 20 day chart and let you look at it we do have a big wick that we closed in on Friday so it could pull back a little bit I'm going to pull up the 20 day right now and the support level that we called for the breakout or the support level was right at 409 and that's the one we had to break out last week and we sure did. We called it out. She ran all the way up and created new highs each day with one day with uh, Wednesday and Thursday as a consolidated period. And once that broke out of that, we created a little mountain up here to 493 and here we are at 480 after hours. So I'm going to pull up the the daily one minute right now we did have a pullback from that high we got a head and shoulders going on here with a neckline right about 478 but I'm gonna lower it down here to right around 475 and that's gonna be our little neckline support I'm gonna pull up the five day or the 20 day here again and try to draw a trend line where I think low support could be and that's going to be right at the 448 I don't like to see, don't want to see it go any lower than that your second support is going to be right in here right around the 464 area and the resistance that we're going to have to break is going to be the 487 but uh, earnings apps has the money it has good earnings it has great business uh, just can't tell you how bullish Vegas and I are on this trade right now we did have to break that resistance down here at 409. We did it in the last four days. She just ran straight up almost a buck, 80 cents, and that's a pretty good little deal. So the first support is going to be right down here at 464. We don't want it to go, and if it goes any lower than that, 448 and then 435. But I don't see it at 435 at all. I see it maybe stopping at the 448, 450 area. And then the breakout resistance is going to be at 487. And remember, this is a year high. So we're going to be breaking year highs on this come out next week. 
and I have a target on this at six dollars and that's APPS next one we're going to talk about is going to be CFMS yep so we've talked about conformists before so you know they're into the um, joint replacement they have the knee replacement product um, this one I bring to your attention again because uh, the stock made a new 52 week high and also you guys know my pocket pivot is there on the chart so whenever I see a pocket pivot on the chart um, it is like a footprint of you know the chart looking to go a lot higher um, you know how much higher it depends on the volume but um, you know CFMS um, to me has a good setup here for a swing trade as well unless there's some sort of continuation um, next week, um, which I am looking to anticipate and see, because I mean, even if you look at this chart, I mean, go way back, even like earlier in the year, you know, this reminds me a little bit of APPS. You know, if you go back to January, February, this stock was under a dollar. I mean, the growth this company's had is just phenomenal. I mean, I've talked about med tech. You guys heard me talk about solely the tattoo removal company. And this company is also in the med tech space and med tech is lit up. It's a great space and it's doing very well this year. Um, so medical technology is doing very well. So CFMS is one to watch uh, for a continuation. You could even see some activity maybe on the day trades, uh, but definitely looking for um, CFMS. I'd like to see this go to around 540. Jim, what are your thoughts on I, this chart? I think we've had a nice little week chart on this. I mean, not week, but weekly. I mean, the last week, last eight days, last two weeks, it's been on a upward climb with a support level right around the 430 area. I'm using it as this bottom trend line. Your next one's going to be right around 440. So let's pull up the year's chart. You can see what Miss Vegas is talking about. We've had a nice little climb on this thing for the last five months. We've had a couple of beautiful breakouts on it every time it pulls back to that 34 EMA it bounces off of it we did try to pull back here about the last two weeks at that 309 area and we had it had a high of 468 so that's a year high we are in an upward channel right now and it can continue on up I got a resistance level at 507 that we need to visit but this is how I'm seeing the second resistance right here right at 473 and we almost touched that it did hit 468 so let's pull up the 20 day this is a beautiful yearly chart it seemed like my crystal ball was almost correct when I called it out last December and we had the big sell off in the spy I said this is going to be a good year for stocks and I've been me and Vegas have been pretty much right on we haven't been bearish at all really we've been playing the pullbacks so Let's call three supports on this baby right now. The 383, I don't think we're going to see it. we got another one right here, right around the 411. That's going to be your second. Your first support is going to be right at 440. Now, it can pull back, and then maybe we could probably pull back here to the bottom trend line here at 430 and keep it going on an upward trend. And that top of that trend line right now, I'm going to mention, is going to be 484. So we've got to break the 473. Let me get that 484 on here. So I'll have it here tomorrow. Right there at 484. So what we got to do is break this double top area. It did try to do that after hours at 464. If we can break that and break that 473, we're going to go to 484. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this year chart up again one more time and give you the three resistances that we need to see. 473, 484, and then 507 and the pullback support is going to be no lower than 383 bet your bottom dollar it won't go lower than that if it does it's oversold and your second support 411 with your 440 and this is CFMS the next one we're going to speak of and be it look at that chart I mean this is a beautiful little roller coaster ride up there and the next one we're going to speak of is S P N F. That's right. So this is a new one. So this is called Sapiens International. Uh, you guys know I love Israeli technology, and I picked this one because again a beautiful pocket pivot, 52 week highs, 52 week closing highs. Um, this company, Israeli company, they're in the technology 
business and software. And um, what they do is they actually offer uh, technology so software products for the insurance industry in particular. Um, they have many big accounts. I mean, they deal with Aviva Insurance, Travelers Insurance, Oregon. They deal with the Avi um, AXA Insurance, Country Financial, Texas. They deal with the Workman's Comp. I mean, they deal with so many different companies. So um, they provide the software solution to those companies. And what I like about the company is they also um, did have their earnings uh, not that long ago. And they also mentioned in the earnings report that they are going to definitely be meeting the guidance and or exceeding it. Um, so I like that the company is confident and uh, they're going to do quite well. And the fact that they're in the insurance industry, I like that they're definitely into the technology space. So um, they're doing very well. Um, they're very confident to actually deliver the full year 2019 guidance which was mentioned by Roni Aldor, um, who's the um, president and CEO of the company, head office located in Israel. Um, also, just to let you know, I mean, this company too has offices in um, the US, they have offices in India. I mean, they are just like all over the place and they even have offices um, I think I saw in the UK as well. So, I mean, they're just like, quite international um and i like what they're in and you know what insurance companies make so much money as you guys know and to have this like software tool that they need it's evident that this company's poised for growth i mean even look at the chart of this company they have grown significantly uh since september this company had a very nice pullback back in december of 2018 uh, and it's done nothing but keep growing and growing and the price of the stock is just evident in the growth and i think you know recently with their guidance confirming that they're going to be meeting it um the market really liked that news so jim let's hear what's happening on your thoughts on that chart because it looks like it's poised for another move yeah year over year they increased their gross profits by 13.8 million which is 35 percent that's pretty impressive to me also i mean 52 million is there a gross Pro, uh, profit which you know you can't beat that so it's in it's got the money we don't have to worry about an offering on this one i don't think and uh so we're going to pull up the year's chart i haven't charted it up like miss vegas said this is new to us we're going to put a double top breakout we had right here really a triple top but basically a double top at 1585 i'm drawing these trend lines in we got a support level right down here right around the 1538 area with another low support and I'm going to call it right here at the 14.97.15 bucks. If it decides to knife, 14.27. I don't see that happening. We just had a pretty good week run, all the way from that engulfing candle from that low support at 14.27 all the way to 15.85. That's a dollar uh, sixty uh, gain in one day. It did pull back, so we're going to call that your second support. Or maybe they will call this low, low, low support. And when I say low, I mean oversold at 1427. Third support going to be at 1497. Your 1538 is going to be your second support and your first one, which I don't think is really a strong buy at 1585. And we're going to put another one right here at 1620. So the resistance we got to break. It's going to be this 1690 area, 1689. To the 1720 now this is a year high chart right here so basically i'm going to throw in one more right here at 1638 i think i'm not going to count them wicks we're going to pull up the 20 day now this is how i chart up stocks so everybody gets a lesson and i'm going to put one more support level right here at 1655 so we had a 1720 high she did pull back to the 1689, which is, you know, a generous little pullback after three white soldiers at, on an hour on an hour daily chart. So after the three white soldiers came in, it did pull back to support level of 1689. 
your second support is going to be right down here at 1655 and then your first support channel your third is a 1620 to 1638 I don't think we're going to see it go any lower than that 1655 that's going to be a strong buy below that you're willing to stop this chart at any time copy and paste it and use it for your own benefit but please don't share them unless you put my name next to it and Vegas's name next to it so the resistance breakout we got to see is 1719 for the year high breakout and that's CPNS and I'm very impressed with the the gross profit on on this trade on this stock right now. Yeah, it's an, it's SPNS. Oh, SP. excuse me, uh, SPNS. Trans yeah. Okay, so next one we're going to talk about is um ZYXI or ZYX however you'd like to pronounce that letter. Um again another medical equipment company am i not teaching you guys some trends or what so this company uh zynex okay they had their earnings um you know till uh, the end of april they made the announcement so basically almost a little over a month ago um they did report um net revenue increases increased 34 percent jim i gave you a little snippet that you can show oh um nine a uh, year over year 9.2 million dollars their net income increased 22 percent um they also generated 1.8 million dollars of cash um which is an increase by the way of 78 percent compared to the last year and uh, they have a working capital of 9.8 million dollars compared to 7.3 Cash on hand, 9.4. After paying $2.3 million, by the way, as a one-time special dividend, which was declared in the fourth quarter of 2018. So this is so important. This company, their orders grew 30% compared to the year before, and they are continuously aggressively expanding their sales force. And they also expect to have new reps, new additional sales reps, to have an impact on order and revenue growth for the rest of this year. Um, they also continue to advocate uh, for patients and physicians to prescribe what they have the next wave technology because it is a uh, platform that treats chronic and acute pain without side effects. And they're dedicated to promoting the technology to help patients with addiction that have side effects from taking you know, opioids. So. Um, they're very, very um, international. I mean, this company, you know, it's been in business since 1996. Um, and they basically, their devices are focused on pain management and rehabilitation. So they, they have a, a proprietary product called NeuroMove, which is a device to help people recover from strokes and spinal cord injury patients. I mean, I would love this company doing some sort of deal with... Um, Oh, was that Israeli company that had the big bull, the big breakout not too long ago, Jim? Oh, <laughs> the, uh, exoskeleton. Yeah. Um, I forget offhand just now, but um, I'll remember. I'll come back to it in a second. See something. But anyway, the that company that had the you know that helps people walk, um, that would be a cool partnership or something there. But anyhow, what they do is they also um, so they do help patients recover with stroke and spinal cord injury patients. Um, they also developed, or, had, or sorry, they are developing a brand new blood volume monitor for hospitals and surgery centers. So they are very advanced, state-of-the-art medical technology. And you know what? People need those products. You know, medical facilities need them. So just the fact that their sales grew, um, and you have to remember, a lot of the products need FDA clearance, and also the CE marking of the product because it has to be, you know, accepted into the industry. Um, so hopefully when they get that product, the new blood volume monitor, they'll get FDA approval. So um, this there's a lot of work that's required in order to advance this technology, but they're doing so, so well. And I'm really liking this company a lot. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, so, Jim, let's hear about this chart because fabulous earnings, fabulous products, medical technology, the chart's just so beautiful. I mean, this has room to go and had a nice pocket pivot, new 52-week closing high, new 52-week high. Where are we going to go with um, this particular stock? 
Well, you're right on the button there. This company has a lot of successful devices on it. I was showing them here on the on the uh, video. You know, it seems like they got a really they got a lot of FDA approved devices here already in the in, oh, the, yeah. in the market. I won't be surprised, honestly, to see this stock going to ten dollars. Like no. I will not be shocked. No, I wouldn't be shocked either. And then if ten dollars came in, your new buyers are going to come in too. But uh, yeah. it's a very healthy chart. Again, you know, I keep mentioning that crystal ball but everything's ran up from the bottoms down there this back at that time was down here at 262 and then we closed at a day high or a yearly high at 875 we did have a triple top breakout and I, these are the kind i really like miss vegas calls them a pocket pivot we got a triple top breakout which i really am impressed i mean if it doesn't succeed on that first one i usually get back in on support so we got a low support down here at seven dollars six ninety eight, and then we got a second support right here at seven thirty eight. Actually, we can draw another trend line right here at seven sixty two. That's what I'm going to do. Yabba dabba do. Then we got seven ninety two for your first support, and we did have that as a triple top. So that's a real nice trend line to go off of. No lower than the seven ninety two. Right now we're at 871, so I'm going to put another little trend line right here at 845 that I see on a yearly. I'm going to pull it up to the 20 day. See how that all kind of fits in on the 20 day? That's what I like about how I do my trend lines. And, you know, by gosh, they could pull back to this area right here at 792 for that triple top breakout. And then it can break the resistance level of 891 and bring it up to 10. I, I figure if we broke past 9, we're going to go ahead and start making new highs on this. And actually, I'm seeing a little $9 spot right back here on a 20-day chart. So yeah, we could almost call this a double top breakout. It kind of snuck in on there for me. If we can break past that 9, we might get new highs on this into next week. So these are going to be your first support your solid support right down here at 792 and I could raise that up to 799 to eight bucks and I think I will I'm gonna color that in this is what I call a real strong support level and we'll take a look at it when we come in here Monday your second support at 845 and they got another one right here right around 860 I need to change this back I love working on these charts so you all can see how I draw these trend lines. I'm doing them off the wicks and off the bases of the candle. So we've got a 845, 858, and then we got one right here at 876. We have an ascending triangle breakout right here, if you can tell. We got lower, uh, higher lows, and then you got a neckline right here at 876. And after hours, you run it up to 890, which I know we're going to see that nine dollars come Monday morning. So we got a low support right down here at 792 to eight dollars. Your second support channel is going to be here at 845 to 858, and then we got a resistance breakout that we got to break is the 876 to 890 area. If it holds in there and starts to gain up, we'll break it up past that nine dollars. This is Z-Y-N-E, I call it Z-Y-N-E, and the next one we're going to talk about is a workhorse all of itself, and it's called W-K-H-S, yeah. and we were calling okay, this one. So you know, W-K-H-S, we've been talking about this, you know, this company started, uh, you know, um, they do the electric parcel delivery vehicles, and, um, you know, they have uh, been around. And we keep hearing the updates, right? That um, they're in discuss GM's in discussion. Um, last I heard, so last we heard, I'm just trying to see if I could get this article. It doesn't seem to. The last headline I had heard was that GM, um, and this is just June 3rd news news line, was that GM was in discussions with the workhorse to sell its Lordstown, Ohio complex. We heard this already before. Um, so, you know, we keep hearing things, but I, nothing, nothing confirmed, but nevertheless, uh, if you look at the weekly chart, uh, it had a nice inside day. It also had a parabolic rise. So we are seeing some strength back on this chart. Um, so it 
could be extended or could be having a pullback, but uh, it looks like it's, you know, ready to have another move. Um, nice setup for a swing trade again. Um, Jim, what are your thoughts on Workhorse? I'm not too impressed with the website, that's for sure. Oh, no, website's crap. Yeah, they need to do something about that. But this is running on momentum off of, just off of a, uh, oh, what do you call it, speculation right now. And when uh, Miss Bearer from GM came out last week, it started picking up momentum again. She backed up her and defends the fact that there, this uh, warehouse is going to be for sale to workhorse. And also the Trump tweets kind of got it going again, you know. And we do have a, 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 a cup in hand or a, a bowl forming here. We did have a pullback to low support at 143. But I've been calling this out last week to support level, and I'll pull that up here in a second. But we did break out of. The... I also okay, I just can I make a comment? Sorry yeah. to interrupt you, but no, I you have the right away, ma'am. No, no, just about workhorse. I just uh, found out too as I'm speaking to you. Fresh news, fresh yep. news. Um, and just this just came out. You want to spit um, it? So... Like just came out as in like now, like oh. a minute ago. Whoa. Um, that workhorse um rallies because the company discloses that it entered into a 25 million dollars worth of subscription agreements with institutional investors Ooh. um and the warrants issued by workers have an exercise price of a dollar 62. um so that news just came out whoa that's good news i'll send it i'll send it to you yeah you send it to me right now yeah yeah i will because i want you to show it to people you know, I have to admire this lady. She really does her research, and and that's what makes us such a great team. You know, I'm great yeah, at so charts. This just came out. Okay, so we, go ahead. don't be surprised. This could be some rally on the stock tomorrow. There it Keep is. On your watch. Yeah. So there's the news from Seeking Alpha. That's a good a little update right there. Let's pull up. Let's pull up the yearly chart. We're going to take a good look at this. We did have to have yeah, a break. Yeah, this, this news came out Friday, but that's why we saw the action. Yeah. So, um, but still keep a watch. And I like the 741 resistance breakout. So I'm going to draw a trend, red trend line on that. That's kind of the yearly high that we had off the base of the candle. And it created a pretty good little resistance on it last week at that 741 level and as you can tell we had a big engulfing candle on this when that truck trump tweet came out and it ran all the way up to 327 from a low down here at 81 cents so this has been on this is a momentum play right now we did have a pullback support level at 143 and it has run up all last week past that i'm going to pull up the 20 day real fast right now I mean, this is a speculative momentum play, but the news keeps coming in, and it just seems like it's not speculation anymore. So let's pull up the 20-day. It seems like it's going to get done, no matter how we think about it. I called this 202 support last week, all week long, after we broke it on these two engulfing candles. It did pull back to that support quite a bit. One day it did kind of overdo itself, so if you were watching this and you had it on your watch list, this would have been big, big buy after hours. You could have got into a real good trade right there, right around 172s where I had a trend line. You see it's kind of choppy on a 20-day, and but I see it just holding up here at the 202 level. If you can see this pull back to $2.02 or maybe back down here to the 195 area, 191 to 195 is going to be a very strong buy. The 202 is going to be your support level. That's going to be your second support. And your first support is going to be right here at the 216 level. And the resistance that we do have to break and we do have to build momentum above is going to be this 241. Now, that 241 is very important. We come close to breaking that again on Friday, but it didn't touch it. I did call this out on the room three days in a row. Actually, I think we've been calling it out for a little while now. But really, last week was the, the week that really caught up momentum. So let's go over this one more time. We got a 191, 195 low, low support. We have a second support level right here, right around the 202 area, which is a solid buy. And then your first support is going to be at the 216 and maybe up here at the 220 area. 
So I'm going to draw me a little base right in there so I can remember this come tomorrow. I'm going to keep this on, I've had this on my watch list, and I could have played this all week long, but I got involved in a couple other great trades that I just couldn't, couldn't resist. The next re first resistance is, or support is going to be right here at the 226. And if that holds, we can break past resistance at 241, 255, and 264. And then I think if this keeps the momentum up, you see this trend line we have right here. also want to make note of this. It shows upward momentum from here. And it kept that trend pretty well up there. So, you know, it could stop right here at 210, 211, or hit this bottom trend line and bounce off of it. And there's also two other moving averages that I use on a daily one minute. And I want to bring it to your attention real fast. That I use also as support if all my other supports fail. And that's the 34 EMA and the 200. And 200 EMA. But we'll just see how she goes. The resistance we do have to break is going to be this 239 area. And I'm going to draw that in there too. Because I see that's the one that we were kind of fiddling around with. Friday, 239 to 241. We break past that 241 and start building some candles above it. We can go up to those new highs and, and get back to that 20-day here real fast. I really do like this trade for speculation trade. I really do like it. So, And I've got to pull up the yearly chart to get those last high resistance that we want to see. And this could run up here to 327. If it does that, it keeps that trend going. We got four other resistances that we need to break. 255, 264, 291, and that 308, and then 327. So feel free anytime to stop these videos, copy and paste these charts, and use them as your own personal reference. With I don't want you to take my trades. I want you to do your own homework and make sure that, that you're comfortable and your gut is, is willing to take the trade. The next one we're going to talk about after workhorse is going to be one that we really really watched it called out on our last video and it was running after hours and that's BYND I really love this company and you know what not only do I love this company can I just say our options team has been on fire um, and you know if you have a small account you should be coming by to check out the room because we can seriously hopefully um, help you grow your account and I mean AMD is a trade we took on Friday and um, we took the 3250 calls and uh, it had a nice nice move don't forget AMD also moved because it got an upgrade um, there was news earlier in the week about something with Samsung um, but also it got an upgrade and because of that the, the stock market uh, liked it and the stock moved but a lot of people have been bullish on AMD all week. I was bullish on it. I was really mad last week um, when I had some option calls that didn't work out because AMD pulled back and it decayed the option um, only to see it rebound after. So it was kind of disappointing. Um, so I had to cut losses on the option call. But you know what? Had I have held it, it probably would have rebounded and not have had to close it. Um, but beautiful trade we did um and a beautiful setup so jim let's hear about this amd what happened to bynd i want to talk about the pullback you're gonna, on... talk about that. you're gonna talk about that later oh okay we've got i got mine backwards then oh <laughs> i have it backwards you have it backwards okay okay well let's talk about amd first okay there's the amd uh website so we'll type in amd real fast and miss vegas i mean she might have been a little disappointed but i wasn't because her call to 30 dollars finally hit and started breaking that resistance level yeah and, it was just the wrong expiry date that's all like yeah. when we picked it it was the the day after or two days later it pulled back so it decayed the call but it was the right call just unfortunately the wrong expiry well, her and I've been very all bullish. Timing, timing. Her and I've been very bullish on this stock all the way down to when it was back at nine sixty-two. We did call a breakout on this trade back then, and her and I've been trading mm -hmm. together for more than two and a half years now. 
and this sucker ran all the way up to 34 bucks I mean just a beautiful little pattern we're getting ready to get back up into that area again it did pull back we did call the pullback on this also the double bottom here at 1659 and it's had nothing but a nice little run all the way up from that so you know I, I kind of look at this trade as, as one that runs up and then they sell it off. It's it, you know everybody's following the leader on this. It runs up and it pulled back and then it, it's just very bullish in my pattern. This last time it ran up, they tried to bring it back down here to 17 bucks again, and I said I don't think it's going to go below 20 if it does at all, and it didn't. It didn't even come close. I'm very bullish on this trade, so we're going to pull up the year's chart right now. And on the year's chart, we were in this little pattern. So let's bring it up to the uh, three month. We were in a channel here for three months between this low support right around the 25 area, $26 area, 26, and, and up here to about the 28. And anything past that 28, I was calling a gift. And once it broke past that here in the last couple of weeks, or this is a week, yeah, this is a daily chart right here. So we've been very bullish on here in the past two weeks. And then finally we broke that $30 resistance that we've been trying to break in the past three months. That was very important. And I really like the news that got me excited about this new trend line we're going to start seeing, this new channel, was the Apple news that they got. That, that was a big catalyst for me to maybe swing this long back up to that $34 area. But I think right now we're going to create some new levels. We're going to create a new channel. I don't want to see it just continually break out and break up and go higher and higher and higher. What I do want to see is for this to have a continuation channel to the right of it, a rectangular sideward channel. And I'm going to call the low support on this trade right here, right around the 2550 area, 2950 area. But if we can keep above this 30 and start the new channel between 30 and 33 maybe 34 dollars that would be just wonderful in my eyes so low support on this thing if it decides to pull back any at all if it does but the news is just a catalyst that keeps this thing pushing is going to be the 30 40 area that's going to be your low support let me repeat 30 dollars and 40 cents and the next support is going to be right around the 3078. That's going to be your third. Your second support's 3148. And and if it pulls back to this 3148, I think about it not breaking below it. If it does, it'll go ahead and pull back to this 3440 and hold tight. And I mean no lower than that. And try to keep it above this 30. Now the resistance we need to break. And I did call this. I did call this. In that last report we did, I said at 32.57 we're going to hit. And look what we did. We did hit that Friday evening. We hit the 34.60. I was only three cents off. And then it kind of just consolidated and we're, looks like we're creating an ascending triangle right here after hours. You see, I mean, there was that call and it just keeps going a little higher, a little higher, a little higher. So the resistance we're going to have to break is going to be that 32.60. And then I'm going to pull up that yearly chart again to show you the other resistances that we got to see. And we're going to bring it up to a high of 33.18 with another dollar. If it breaks past that 33.18, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a long resistance at $34. Now, you know, I'm, I'm so bullish on this trade that I think we are going to create that double top here within a month or so. And break it up to forty dollars. If we can break that thirty-four fourteen, I'm very bullish on this trade. And this is AMD. Keep it on your watch list. Play the pullbacks, and we got to have a resistance breakout of thirty-three eighteen. That's AMD. And then the next one we're going to talk about is going to be BYND. Yeah, BYND. So BYND is obviously beyond meat and i gotta tell you this was a shocker <laughs> because they had earnings and um the shorts got squeezed on this one very badly and you know it's really hard sometimes to have to short an ipo i guess people shorted it because they figured the company doesn't make money 
um, they're not that profitable. So they were shorting the stock in anticipation that the earnings are just going to be really bad. And you know what? Um, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. And so they got squeezed really bad. And Jim actually said <laughs> that day, uh, this is going $150. And I'm like, no, it's not. I'm like, you can't say that, Jim. I'm like, this is uncharted territory. And if you say that to people in the room that are buying, buy, bind or bind, they're buying this, they were buying, people are buying the stock after hours because they were in the trade. The way, you know, after hours trading. And I thought, Jim, they're going to end up holding the stock thinking it's going to go to 150. And then if they, if it doesn't go there, they're going to be mad that they held the stock. Like, at least let's just give a realistic. He's like, nope, I like the 150. And you know what? Got to give this man credit. He knows his charts. Even though it's uncharted, he could taste the meat. <laughs> <laughs> let's hear, Jim, your thoughts on this stock. Well, the reason I like the stock, because it's going to cut down on cow farts. That's my big momentum player on this trade right now. That's because it's an environmental friendly, uh, uh, vegetarian kind of trade in a way. And, and I was just joking about the 150 because Miss Vegas called 150 on the breakout and 115. And it hit that 115. Then she turned around and called 127 and we hit the 125. So I just threw out the number 150s next. You know, I'm just kind of hyping the joke and actually the next day the sucker run all the way up to that 150 area and it just you know so now i would say it maybe 300 bucks on this trade if this momentum keeps up now mind you this is a very low float stock of four point some million shares and this has got a lot of people interested i mean they price this ipo out perfect in my opinion a lot of them may overprice them like uh, Uber and just you know other other they try to get as much as they can but when you see something priced out like this I mean there's just a beautiful little IPO price out so and and I was telling maybe people could short this thing once it hit that 150 Friday and they could have shorted it down here to a lower level here so I'm gonna put a trend line right here at 135 136 136.99 with another support level right here at 131.76, uh, heck yeah, you have to say it's overextended. You know, it traded fifty dollars in one day. So you know, you got to think, okay, it's going to pull back a little bit here. So I'm going to use two moving averages on this trade, and I'm going to look at the yearly chart when I do them. But I, I don't think we're going to see no 86, 60 something. I mean, that 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 ain't going to happen. But what I am going to say, and I'm going to pull up the 20 day again is maybe we can get it back to that 115 area and start building momentum off of that. That's going to be your low support. I don't want to see it go no lower than that 115. Or maybe this thing, with it being such a small float, it can go ahead and break back up to that 150. It's all going to depend on the tape and the level two and how many people are. But there's a lot of bullish people that are really, really going to use this as the next chip, chip A, I think, or people are just going to start putting their money in this thing and it's going to run up to 300 bucks and i wouldn't be surprised if it did i would not be surprised if it did so we're going to draw a trend line right here at the 146 149 46 resistance to break and i'm going to pull up the daily now and take try to draw a couple other trend lines in this thing and i really don't have much to go off of we do have a 40 140 25 Low support, low, low. It's going to be right down here at the 124.42 if it decides to sell off. Second, 131.76. First at 135, 136, 135.99, 136. The resistances that we're going to have to break is going to be that 140.25. If we can break that, we might bring it back up here to this level right here where that big candlestick is at 146.51. Uh, 149.46 breakout and that's BYND and uh, congratulations to anybody and especially congratulations to Miss Vegas that called this sucker out she was in it during the earnings and, and, and took a real nice trade on this trade here so that's BYND and then we talked about AMD and the next one 
is it one that I was disappointed with, but I think we're hit a bottom, and that's going to be Nile. Okay. Well, I don't have much to say about Nile except that, um, you know, disappointed to see that this electric car maker that I was really bullish on last year has really let me down. And you know what? I think it's let a lot of people down. Um, in plus, it really did so well at one time. And then it's just gone down to like, you know, just imagine like people that might have had the stock at $10 or just even even $8, $6 averaging down. Like, look, like it's no no help to average down sometimes i'm not losing stock um but you know everyone thinks differently uh but you know what this nile is just so beaten down but you know what jim let's hear what you think because you've been watching this like a little hawk yeah and i've been you know definitely bearish on this trade for you know even when other people were trying to call it out i said no i'm not ready yet i'm not ready yet and what I'm seeing now kind of makes me a little more optimistic about the trade itself. And I'm going to pull up the year's chart. I did call this last time when we had the breakout, and it ran up pretty good. And we had like a triple bottom down here just under 6 bucks, and it ran all the way up to resistance. And I noticed when it was running up at this time, there were a lot of fat cats getting in this trade and buying, I mean, th tens of thousands of shares at one time. But then when the earnings came out, I was just totally disappointed with that. And I was totally disappointed that they didn't go ahead and build their own warehouse. And ever since then, from that $10 area, we did try to, we did, and we were, we've been watching this for a whole year. You know, we watched the day the IPO came out and I thought to myself, is this going to be one that's going to keep running? And then finally, I went ahead and got stuck in the trade myself because I thought we were going to get more out of it. And then I took sold it at a loss. And I've definitely made my money back since. But what we got down here right now is a real hard sell off in the past month. And we got a double bottom here at, at this low level right at 263. And I just think it's oversold right now. And I do believe that the momentum might pick up in this trade right now. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day. You can look at the 20 day, how hard it sewed off. I mean, where people are trying to call it up here at the 450 level, thinking it was going to go back to five. And I said, nah, I'm not that excited about it. But now we're down here, another 100% uh, drop down here at 254 low. I know a couple people on uh, Twitter that got in it uh, the day before the, the rebound here. So I've got different resistance levels I want to see. I don't want to see it go no lower than the 263 for a buy, for an entry. And if we can hold it and start creating a channel down there at that 263 area, we can run this up to 281, back to 3 bucks, then break that resistance of 326 and bring it back up here to the 4 to $450 area. But um, so, if, you know, if I was an optimist trader right now on this trade, I'd buy me a small dose of it I'd look into the options of it maybe to for a couple of months and I'd see what kind of price you could get it back up here to about 381 for a target and that would be my target 381 and I'd like to see it break the 302 area but I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna have this definitely close on watch now and I'm getting semi getting a little bullish on it I'm, my, I'm I even called it out for a buy in a swing trade and that's going to be Nile. I think we're down here at the bottom. I really do. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be the last one. And I'm going to snap right to it. And that's Snap. Okay. Well, Snap is surprising a lot of people. A lot of people didn't think this was going to happen on Snap. And you know what? I have been bullish on Snap for a few weeks. And we did so well on these option calls as well. Snap is a beautiful setup. Still looking for this continuation. I mean, listen, earnings on this stock also not for a long time. The earnings are out of the way. This has in a new uptrend. And that's what you have to pay attention to. Whenever you see a stock in a new uptrend, you must add it to your watch list and maybe look to consider it for a potential swing trade or a continuation for the next day. Um, it's in a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful space right now. Um, the other thing, too, um, earnings, you know, like I said, is done. We have a lot of cushion between now and the next earnings report. 
and I anticipate um, SNAP to continue uh, on this channel that it's at. So, Jim, let's hear about the SNAP channel. Yeah, but again, here we go to one of them ugly websites. One thing I learned in college was yellow is not the color to use for a marketing <laughs> position. I mean, this yeah. thing is yellow as yellow could be. It's just a very ugly website. So if I was their marketing agent, I would definitely uh, change that real fast. But the stock in itself did have a real, it was downgraded quite a bit. Downgraded to about $4.82. And that was back during that crash back in December. And then she's ran up ever since then. And there, some analysts were still trying to downgrade this thing. And Vegas has been pretty well bullish on this. What we had to do was break the 1232 area. And that was kind of like, and here we are sitting at the year and you could see this perfect cup and handle right here on the yearly chart. So we did have to break that resistance, and that resistance was right here, and I'm going to call it right around the 1373 area. We did have a double top breakout here right around the $14. So this is where, I mean, we did have a year high at 1447. So you have to kind of be patient with this trade. I wouldn't just jump right in it and, and, and say it's going to run up to 20 bucks, but what I would say, and I'm going to pull it up to a 20 day, and this is just my feeling. I mean, she's a little more bullish on it than I am. That's true. So we got a 1276 low support, maybe a low around 1231, and we got your first support area right here at the 1312 to 1328. I think it can pull back to that 1312. And we could start scalping this trade or maybe break the resistance of 1410. But this has been a nice little 20 day chart all the way down here from 10 bucks all the way up to 14 in 20 days. And that's just a beautiful chart. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And now we're going to consolidate and the resistance we got to break is the 1406. And as I was saying, I'm going to pull up a three year. I don't think it's been around that long. Sure has. Look at this. Let me see, let me see if I can find us another resistance here. Fourteen eighty eight, and maybe bring it up here to around that fifteen thirty seven. So yeah, this can run up more definitely. Then I got another resistance right here at fifteen sixty seven, and one more right there at sixteen forty two. So yeah. This is a beautiful little run. I mean, all the way, all year long, it's ran all the way up from that 482. Let me repeat, 482 all the way up to about 14 bucks. So that's a $9 scalp in a year. And I do believe if we got a resistance, we got a break. If, we, if it keeps running, the momentum keeps up. You've got four of them right here with a 1642 high right now. And this thing was up here at 30 bucks at one time. And this is snap. So keep a good eye on it. Vegas is bullish on it. I'm semi-bullish on it, but I like to play the pullbacks, and that's how I'd look at this trade. And I'm going to pull back again one more time and tell you what I think is support level. This 1267, 1276 low support. Your second support channel is a 1312 to 1328 with a resistance breakout of 1410. And that's going to be snap. And that concludes our aftermarket report, Sunday's edition. It's usually a little bit longer. We've talked about them a little bit longer on this one here. Please subscribe to our, and I'm going to pull this up, pull up our website. Please subscribe to our Twitter's page. We do have a Twitter page. It's getting bigger day by day. We're up to 252 followers now, and it's been, I think, about a month since we've had it out. Please hit that follow button. Also, in our uh, website, we do have the room service where you can join up to the room, join the chat for a free trial. And if you like the free trial and you like how we're running the room, you can go ahead and join us with a small fee. And uh, we do have also have our stock twit pages on here. You can link up to us on our stock twits. I have my room. Vegas has her room. And we do wish everybody a a great thing. I'm going to hand this over to Miss Vegas. I know she has more to say, and I love stocks.
Yeah, well, you know what, guys? Thank you so much for joining us on Sunday's edition. A little longer than the usual, but you know what? Again, trying to give everyone ideas um, for swing trades, day trades, option trades. Um, I will be definitely focusing uh, on some option plays for this coming week. So if you're interested, um, make sure to follow on uh, Stock Twits and or t Twitter um, so that I can post uh, a couple ideas throughout the day you can follow and check out. Um, it's just easier for me to post on there. And if you subscribe to the social media platform and follow us, you will definitely get the alerts. But you have to make sure it's not just about following. You have to check off to notify you when you get it, when I send out a tweet or to be notified when I send out a message on StockTwits. Because I find a lot of people sometimes subscribe to the social media following, but they don't click the option to be notified when a message is sent and then what ends up happening is you miss the messages so you have to make sure you click on the option that says notify me of new postings so that way you'll get it so on that note have a great weekend everyone and you know what i want to tell the toronto fans that tomorrow is so exciting because toronto is in the NBA Finals, and tomorrow could be the actual day that they win the trophy. So fingers crossed to the Raptor fans and to all of Canada and all the Canadians. Uh, go Raptors, go! And uh, best wishes. And by the way, those tickets are insane. They're like 15000 20000 each. Some of them I saw are going for $60,000 for a ticket, depending how close you want to sit. Um, so the um, Jurassic Park is just going to be lit and the city's just on like so excited about this. Um, and I got to say, Nick Nurse, amazing, amazing coach. Uh, you guys should read about him. Um, what he does is just amazing. And I love what he said. They interviewed him the other day and they asked him a question. You know, what do you think about the team? And you're almost in the finals. He says, well, you know what? We haven't won yet. So I have no comment. And I love that so so humble you know it's not getting to anyone's head oh my god that we're winning three games to one we're almost there you know what you're not the winner until it's been declared you're the winner and i love that attitude so kudos to that way of thinking so everyone have a great weekend and see you tomorrow have a good night this is the aftermarket report june 9th 2019 sunday's edition and we love stocks.